All right, here we go, oblique asymptotes. I uh, kind of glossed over this before when we did the horizontal asymptotes. We had three different categories and we talked about the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So oblique asymptotes are gonna occur when the degree of the numerator is one greater than the degree of the, den of the denominator, all right? So what does that look like? Let's look at an example. Let's look at an example. So f of x, let's say f of x equals four x cubed, 4x cubed plus 2x plus 2x minus 10. And we're dividing by something that is one less. So the degree of the numerator has to be one greater than the denominator in order for there to be an oblique asymptote. All right? In order for there to be an oblique. And an oblique asymptote is just going to be a diagonal line, right? So what's happening here is this is actually, it's a fraction, so we're actually dividing. And in order to find the equation of this oblique asymptote, I need to actually divide this. And my quotient will be the uh, oblique asymptote. So let's just use a long division. It's been a very long time, but long division looks like this. All right. This is one way to do it. I've also seen it where we space out to leave a space for the x squared term somewhere. I've also seen that. And actually, maybe I'll do that real quick so that you can see, like, there's really zero x squared. And some people even write that, zero x squared, because we don't have any. So just leaving a space, kind of, for those other terms that we don't have in our equation here. Um, so then we're going to multiply this times this to get the bottom. We're trying to match the 4x cubed. We're going to try to match this first term. Uh, so I've got an x squared term, so I know I can multiply times of 4x, and I'm going to line that up with my x's here. So 4x times x squared, that's going to be 4x cubed right? And then 4x times 1, that's going to be 4x, and I'm going to line that up. So then you just subtract. So subtract straight down this minus this, that's canceled. That's the whole reason I came up with that. That's 0. There's no x squared term, so there's nothing right there. And then it's 2x minus 4x, which is negative uh, 2x, negative 2x. And then the negative 10 comes down, negative 10. Now, now the next step would be, okay, now I'm trying to get negative 2x minus 10. Negative 2x is what I focus on with something over here, and then multiply times this. But I've got an x squared term, and I have an x term, so that's not going to work. Turns out, as soon as it doesn't work anymore, this is going to be part of, my re part of my remainder, I need to look at just this quotient piece. And it turns out, that is actually my oblique asymptote. So my oblique asymptote is at y equals 4x. So if you had a graph, this would be a line that goes up 4 over 1, and it would be a dotted line that the graph would approach, okay? The graph would approach that. So that is how you would do it with long division. Let's look at one more example. So let me erase this real quick. Erasing, 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 erasing. Let's say now that I have a different equation. Let's say I'm working with a different equation. How about something like this, 5x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 1 plus 1 divided by x plus 2. So again, there's going to be an oblique asymptote. Why? Because the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 1. So 2 is 1 greater than 1. So there's going to be an oblique asymptote. And now I need to divide to do that. So here's my long division. 5x squared minus 3x plus 1 I've got my x plus 2, all right? I'm looking at this first one, I need to get 5x squared. I've got an x term, so I'm going to multiply times 5x, and I'm going to line it up with my 3x's just so I visualize it better. 5x times x is 5x squared. It does match, and when I subtract, it'll cancel. 5x times 2 is going to be 10x, right? And this, so this cancels, it's 0x squared. Negative 3x minus 10x is going to be negative 13x, and then this comes down plus 1, right? So I now I need to get the negative 13x, and I've got an x. So how do I get negative 13x from x? Minus 13. Negative 13 times x is negative 13x. Those match. That's good. When I subtract, they'll cancel. Negative 13 times 2, that's negative 26. So then these, negative 13x minus negative 13x, those are going to cancel. It's going to be 0. And then 1 minus a negative, that's going to be 27. All right, so then I'd be looking at 27. What can I multiply times to get 27 when I have an x term? Nothing. So this is going to be part of my remainder, part of my remainder. I'm not even going to worry about the rest of this stuff, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to look at this. That's my quotient. This 
is going to be my oblique asymptote. So I have an oblique asymptote at y equals 5x minus 13. Okay, so there's the, this is the line that starts at on the y-axis at negative 13 and goes up 5 and over 1. That's my oblique asymptote for this polynomial, or this rational function. And this rational function um, will have other critical points on there. Maybe it looks like it's probably got an asymptote at uh, negative 2, right, a vertical one. So you could investigate that further in order to make a graph. Now, a little side note is maybe it's been a really long time since you've done long division. If it's been a long time since you've done a long division, let me show you another way. So either way, there's a lot of w different ways that work. There's something called synthetic division that I've seen people do. Um, that works with just the coefficients of the numbers, and it's basically the same as long division, just kind of simplified. The other way that I've kind of seen people do it is using these boxes. And these boxes have been helping people organize their work when multiplying polynomials. And they've also been help, helpful for figuring out if something's a factor of a polynomial. So if when we were investigating polynomials before, I may have looked at just the numerator and said, OK, here's a root. Find the other one. And you would have just divided, which is what we're doing now. So you would have looked at this factor x plus 2. And what does it multiply times to get the top? Now this isn't going to divide evenly. We, we just saw that from our last problem. So we're going to, but we're still going to try it. And what we're going to be left with down here is going to be our oblique asymptote. Okay, so we're going to get as far as we can until it breaks. All right. So let's see. I need a five x squared term. That's all this stuff is going to attempt to combine to give me the top. We'll get as far as we can. Start off five x squared. So I need a five x. Five x times x is five x squared. This must be ten x. And then I need a negative three x term. But I just came up with a 10x term, so how many x's do I need down here? Well, I need negative 13x, right? 10x and negative 13x makes the negative 3x. Okay, so something's going to be multiplied times here. What is it? Negative 13 times x is negative 13x. Negative 13 times 2, negative 26. I need a positive 1. So I would need 27 to combine with that in order to get my positive 1. And that means this would have to be something here to get me 27, but it doesn't work. It breaks right here. Who knows? What happens? What do we do? So we don't focus on that anymore. We just focus on this piece, which is exactly what we just did. So it's y equals 5x minus 13. It's the same exact answer, obviously. We, of course, it's going to be consistent. That's my oblique asymptote. So if this process is easier for you, just do that. You don't have to worry about long division. If you've been doing the boxes and you kind of understand how they work, just realize that at some point it'll break down. Because if it didn't break down, that would mean that that this is a factor of this, meaning if that was if it divided evenly, if it were all worked out, that means that this would have been a factor of this it multiplied times something else, and we would have ended up canceling it out somehow with the qualification that x can't equal negative two, right? So if that were true, but that is not true because it doesn't divide evenly, so we're left with this piece that is going to be our oblique asymptote. Good luck.